recorded. Your image and voice will be recorded. Um, all right, we've got kind of a lot going on tonight, so let's get to it. Um, minutes, I saw the minutes for, yes, so remind me of the date. So the 7th and the 21st. Okay, did the 21st go out also? Yep, so that came in a later email. Okay. Like around um, maybe 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock last night. Okay. Um, did everybody have a chance to look at the minutes? Mm -hmm. Questions, comments? Very thorough. Penetrating insights? Uh, I, I was not here on the 21st, as I recall. That's when Ann tested. And oh, right. Uh, yep. So I can't vote on that. All right. So we'll take the vote separately. Um, well, I think we didn't we determine that you could vote even if you weren't at the meeting. I think you have to you have to watch the video. Oh, I did okay. not. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So um, I'll accept a motion to accept the minutes of August seventh. Second. So moved. Any um, discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask you to vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Now, uh, minutes for September, no, August 21st. Yep. Um, can I have a motion to accept? So moved. Oh, it's, yeah, it's a second. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask you to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, we have minutes. Treasurer's report. Shouldn't be much of a change, right? Yep, so not much of a change. Uh, so Wetlands account still has $14,531.57. Open space, we have $28,302.78. And then the annual budget, we have $1,519. Exactly, so. <laughs> All right. That's where we're at. Awesome. Um, and bills and forms. No bills, no forms. No bills, no forms. Excellent. Uh, mail and notices. Um, it's been quiet. MACC's fall conference is coming up soon, so make sure you register for that. Let us know if you register for it, because uh, we can use the wetlands fund to uh, fund that. To reimburse you. Yeah. yeah. What so is that? No, I don't know. I'll look it up. <laughs> yep. It, yeah, it tends to I, be... I want to say it's October, like, third week of... Weekend yeah, after. like the weekend after Columbus Day or something, yeah. it tends to be. Okay. Is it in Sturbridge this year again? No, it's up in... Oh, I should know all this, but <laughs> it's not Sorry. going to be. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. yeah, it looks like 19th, 20th, I think. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's a great way if you're working on taking classes to get certified. Um, it's also just a great way to sit in on sessions information sessions and um, I always learn a lot when I go yep and they usually offer some of their classes like the one-on-one uh, wetland the commissioners. basic ones yep yeah um, so it is October 19th and it will be held in Devons oh yep um, I've taken some classes there's a hotel in Devons mm -hmm. like a Holiday Inn or something that has conference rooms that um, so it's not a bad drive Awesome. Um, all right. Is that it? It's pretty for much that? it for mail and notices. So. All right. <laughs> so let's um, introduce our newest person at the table. Uh, um, well, I don't know how much information you want, but I'm Lexi Rogolinski. I grew up in Berlin. Um, I've been in New York the past few years for school and work, and I'm back in Berlin for the time being and hoping to get more involved in Concord. Yes. And what did you go to school for? Uh, my major was the environmental studies major at my school. So. Awesome. Yeah. It's well, pretty broad, but. <laughs> yeah, but that's all right. Yeah. So is this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? A little bit of everything. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, welcome. Uh, Le so Lexi's going to sit in and um, be uh, an associate of the commission and um, oh. hopefully learn some stuff. And maybe we can help steer her in a path of conservation work. Yeah, <laughs> I would love that. Awesome. Um, 
All right, that's that. How are we doing? We doing good. Uh, nothing new up at Maplewood. Nope. True. That is true. They're still getting soil imported in now, so we occasionally get their uh, soil testing uh, information, right. but not too many. Just, I think one since our last meeting, maybe. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they are importing <laughs> soil? They are, okay. yep. So yes. I haven't seen any trucks go by. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's good. Uh, yeah, I mean, it is. It's there, yeah. <laughs> um, excellent. And Highland Ridge, the most recent monitoring report. All right, so everything is stable. Um, the Northwestern Basin is functioning normally. Overall, site is stable. Long-term maintenance of areas stabilized with wood chips remains unresolved. So. Yeah, I'm shocked. Yep. Right? I did send them an email um, over the weekend, you know, asking them to address the wood chips or what their plan is to address the wood chips, and it's been silent. So. Sure. Yep. Um, do we want to talk to them about removing more silt fence? Have you been up there? I'll go look. Okay. Because that looks pretty stable. Maybe Bill and I can water yeah, we'll go over. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. I'm putting it on my calendar now so I don't forget. I mean, is there any value in an enforcement order on the wood chips or how, how is anybody? No, because. Uh, yeah, what do you think? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I assume you would have suggested that already. If yeah. It was, but. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. It just. Gonna well, be a little bit more for them to get their COC, but <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, the for sale sign still, still up. In the for those two units. For those two units. <laughs> uh, so, all right. We're not going to discuss that at open meeting. No problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's um. So moving on, I saw the email from CSX today. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So they did Great. get up there. 18 pages. 18 pages. <laughs> Mostly <laughs> pictures. Yep. <laughs> yep. So they did get up there September 4th and remove all the railroad ties that had fallen within the buffer zone and within Northbrook itself. Um, they reported minimal damage, you know, just kind of crushed vegetation was basically the main issue that they observed up there. But it was overseen by a wetland scientist who prepared the report that it's forwarded to all of you. Um, yeah, I didn't recognize that name I because we've only met yeah. with Jonathan. Well, yeah. and the firm was out of Florida. Yeah, and I, then this I came noticed. up and I thought, hmm, yeah. what's going on here? Um, <laughs> but, yeah, um, so good job, Maddie. Yeah, so we got <laughs> go ahead, cleaned up. But I guess they're still storing railroad ties on SVT's property. I reached out to them. They were like, yeah, we'll look into it. <laughs> yeah. But they did uh, get them out of the buffer zones that we, like we requested. So. Yeah. Well, it's, but the cover letter said, but we're gonna <laughs> store stuff in the buffer zone should we need to. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Too bad, so sad. But it sounds like so they weren't actively working anymore. So they were like, oh. <laughs> right. We will clean up the ones that we're not actively working with. Yep. <laughs> Which at least at yeah. least there was that. I I had very low expectations that they would even respond. So yep. Um, like I said, good on good for you. Yep. Good for you for <laughs> pushing to issue yep. the enforcement order and getting that. Yep, I don't think it was fair fair for Jim and Dan to be trying to pull these things out of. Sure. Especially Is that who discovered it? So I was wondering how Jim, this, yeah, yeah, Jim. Jim he was yeah. walking it, yeah. Um, and he was trying to pull them out, and, you know, they have machines like this, so right. <laughs> make them use their machines <laughs> to yep. clean it up. Yep. I noticed uh, up around Sterling and other places that they have mountains of old ties and a few mm -hmm. new ones, too. So they're still working. Yep. Yeah. But I hope... Uh, someday they, they're going to pick up those old ties and get them out of the. Sure, they will. Yeah. Sure, they will. Yeah. You've seen that mountain down in uh, Crosby Road there? Yeah. There's two in Berlin, actually. Right, yeah. there's one by Bridge Realty. Yeah, they'll be picking mm -hmm. them up. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the one by Bridge Realty has gotten smaller. That's, I didn't notice it when I drove by it yesterday. So. Oh, really? Oh, so I maybe there. You know. <laughs> you, uh, well, yeah. that's good. Yep. Um, and it is on the other side of the tracks from the river. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. So that's great. Uh, river Road West. No updates. Um, 
they applied for a building permit for the interior of the house. <coughs> so that's good. Moving right along with that. And CSX again. Nope. All right. All right. Um, well, we have 15 more minutes until our joint meeting with the select board. So maybe we can move on and actually have a reasonably early night. <laughs> uh, you just jinxed it. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, does anybody have, so 61 Lancaster Road. So AJ and I went out yesterday for a site visit to meet with the homeowner, meet with the contractors to figure out how we can get them the site stabilized and you know in um, compliance yep yeah yep so <clears throat> it's not dreadful that's for sure it's not dreadful but it's not great either right. like so i think the biggest thing is we do need an accurate as built plan because this wall is no longer there it's now on this side so we do need them to provide a lease and as built so the owner basically wants to create parking in this area um, I guess they're, they're oh, really? yeah so they kind of want to well I guess it's more maybe this area here like parking for three cars yep. is what they're aiming um, and the dotted line whoop, oops, no, go back for a sec the dotted line is the hundred foot is the so 25 this, oops, so this so this is the 25 no disturb which kind of comes in so they want to put parking within the 25 foot Mm. And did you? So I guess. Well, so the self fence. Well, who knows? Because it's still on this side of the self fence, so it wouldn't be in the twenty five foot. Oh, if it's maybe. Yeah. If they put the self fence. Fence where it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks like a real accurate depiction of what we saw with our eyes when we're on the ground yesterday. Yeah. Um. And then they were also requesting river down down at the end of the driveway where the culvert is. Mm -hmm. They were wondering if they could put just a few larger stones to kind of, let's see. So this is the area where the stones are just kind of on the silt fence. Yeah. And as soon as you remove that silt fence, they're all gonna fall right down. Yeah. So they were wondering if they could just lay some larger stones, kind of dig this out, lay larger stones in that area. Why? Uh, you know, the thing is, they, they came in, here's a lot that is borderline at best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they came in and stretched and reached and groaned and grunted and squeezed and got this thing in there. Minimum, barely made it. Mm -hmm. Now they come in and they want to go beyond it. If they wanted to go beyond it, we never would have let them in the first place. This was a very difficult lot. Mm -hmm. And this was happening all over town, you know. Give me a piece of land, some speculator wants to do something with it. I say no. The laws, of the, uh, the twenty foot, five foot buffer. This is, was what was on the plan. Stick with it. I'm not willing to allow speculators in Berlin to have an easy way with it. We used to have some pretty good bylaws in Berlin, soil boards of health, and everything else. And between the legislature and everything, weakening everything, and developers just constantly pushing and pressing and stretching. You know, it's it's uh, out of I, I'm against any 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 um, extra uh, additions or allowances on that lot. So that's just my humble right. opinion. And as far as putting boulders here, unless they can show a good reason, mm -hmm. that's technically filling in a wetland. No, so they just want to put it right here where the stone is. It's not. So they just want more to stabilized, kind of along the driveway edge there. In other yep. words, dig the stone out and put boulders in instead. You can't to, put to, boulders to on top of that. Right, right. To stabilize the side of the driveway yep. so it doesn't collapse. Mm -hmm. mm. They didn't see that when they were doing that. I mean, that's obvious right. from that picture. <laughs> right. <laughs> when, when Maddie and I saw that when we were walking up, we were like, okay. So, yeah. Is that fence actually holding that crushed stone yeah. in place? Yeah, 100%. Essentially it, are you kidding me? 100%. And, and there's not supposed to be any gravel, according to the plan, there's no gravel on that side of the driveway to begin with. 
If they want to remove all of that stone and put in boulders or something where that is, that's one thing. But they, they put stones on top of that. That's just going to cave in and get into the wetlands, and then where are we? Right. Well, We've no, allowed they, it to happen. They, ha they have said that they would remove the, that gravel, but we need to make sure that that's what happens. If they move their gravel, though, it looks like their driveway is going to collapse, mm -hmm. which is why they want the boulders. <laughs> mm -hmm. So where will they move all the gravel to? Uh, we suggested so there's a little outlet for the uh, roof runoff that kind of outlets towards pretty much where AJ is like walking out. It kind of comes yep. up right there. So I suggested you know taking that gravel and laying it there, there too. as like yeah. a little little mm -hmm. riprap. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now I understand. I thought you said Maddie that they were going to put the boulders on top. If that, oh no. <laughs> that, that silt fence is the border. Period. Yep. They can do anything they want on the left side of it. Hmm. On the I mean, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to know how much that gravel pushed the silt fence. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know, like, like, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Don't like, I mean, the wetland is really like, right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How much of a drop off? I mean, it looks like that's like a good foot or two that if you remove the gravel, yeah. oh, it's, yeah. that your driveway is going to collapse of. before you could put the boulders right. in there. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh, like the gravel's not holding the driveway up. Okay. Um, yeah. There was a crossing there over an existing cul culvert, okay. and they paved over that. Okay. Um, so I think they're concerned about erosion on the side. Okay. And, but why? But just this side? They're not concerned about the other side. It's uphill. Yeah. The other side is uphill. Okay. Well, you can see where. I I, I suspect that's that's the mound for the septic right there, right? Right. That, that right front yard. there. Yeah. yeah. Is it realistic to think that the boulders are going to be that supportive? I mean, right? Is it realistic to think? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they would, they would need to. Sure. They would need to do some underpinning work with, mm -hmm. like, right, right, crushed yep. rock. You yep. know, like a, a proper base mm -hmm. in there and build up. Mm -hmm. And then they could put boulders on it, but the boulders are basically going to be decorative and right, right. somewhat so, prevent erosion. So I, I really, mm -hmm. I think we want them to dig that out, mm -hmm. and then we should do another site visit before yeah. they do anything else. Okay. Um, and are they coming to it? No. Okay. Right. Um, and you know, I would like so where those cars are parked is where they want to do. Yep. So I'd like to see that staked out. I'd like to see what they are going to do with the rest of the wood chips. Yep. And what so they're going to do to stabilize. Yep, we did talk about it. So essentially, they were thinking like where the driveway starts to kind of come in, like just kind of past that next black car. Mm -hmm. So from there down, it starts getting woodsy. So and you can see ferns are starting to pop up, like the nat natural vegetation starting yep. to take over. So, but up here, it's kind of it's lawn that's kind of sparse lawn so they were willing to seed you know all the way down to the parking spot from the upper lawn so essentially they would seed all the way where's the fence I don't know so down through here to about where their parking spot is leave room for three cars and then let the wood chips kind of degrade down mm. is what I don't know what they want to do yeah yes <laughs> um and uh, as as our wetland specialist has pointed out on a different site in yeah. town, that wood chips are not really a permanent permanent stabilization, mm -hmm. and um, I'm not sure that well, I know that I'm not okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty flat. Yeah. So like it's our thought. It's not like Highland. Right. Okay. And there is natural vegetation actually trying to pop its yep, way yep, through. Because yep. they wanted to take the wood chips from out here and move it down the edge. And I was like, no, I think you're probably better off just letting it bow degrade down. Create soil. Leaf litter is going to fall on it soon. Right. You're going to start getting natural soils anyways. It's a lot of pine anyways, so not, I don't know. Right. <laughs> not too much usually grows in there. But. Right. Um, yeah, all right. Real, real nice anonymous all through there. Yeah. Uh, does anybody else have anything that they want to see done for the next steps? Well, 
if we're even going to consider giving them the parking spots, we need to know whether or not that crosses the 25 foot no disturb zone. Correct. And I don't, I mean, I haven't been out to look at this site yet, mm -hmm. so I can't, you know, but again, I, I am curious as to how much the gravel may have pushed the silt fence around. Right. You know, and then it's a matter of how picky we're going to be about it. Right. Um, it sounds like they're, um, from what Walter said and just from their overall attitude about the situation, like they're kind of like, can we get this? Right. <laughs> and I, I tend to tire of that quickly. Sure. Yep. Um, right. So if, if you could respond to them and say, we want that gravel dug out mm -hmm. and then we'll revisit. And if they can stake, stake out. out and I assume, I know you, um, I assume you did tell them that we're going to need an accurate as built. Yep. yep. Um, and did they agree? Yeah, well, so he's convinced that they provided us an accurate as built. And so, okay, I will but trust they didn't. That. Yeah. <laughs> um, because if they did, then mm -hmm. we want them to build the wall. Yeah. <laughs> that's on the yep. plan. So, uh, their choice. Yeah. They can redraw it without the wall. And what really is there, or they build the wall. Yeah. Okay. Um, Carolyn, quick question. Yeah. Um, I know we're just about ready for yep. the meeting. Um, are we sure that the what's underneath that gravel is sufficiently supporting the driveway, or do we not know? We do not know. Okay. That I doesn't also look to me like it. Uh, it yeah. would. It seems like a very steep. Yeah. Right. I mean, maybe it's just the the angle of the picture. But to me, it looks like if you remove that gravel, that driveway is not going to be. Yeah, that's how it looks. Right, to but me too, that's but not actually our job. Agreed. Agreed. Well, except right. that it's if they remove the gravel and then there's just, you know, dirt. Correct. Right? That that's our concern. That, yeah. And that's that's my yeah. that's my concern yeah. in yeah. that situation. So yeah, yeah. Or did they excavate under the gravel before they put the crushed stone in there? Did they just which is why I want it dug out soil. and go look right. at it. Right. Yeah. 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 So right. is the person who's living in that house the one who built had no. the house built? No. No. Spectrum. So how were they able to sell Get it? Get an occupancy permit? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> that is a very good question, my dear. I think you'd have to go down the hall to get that one answered. Yep. Uh, yep. So, can a building permit be issued when all other um, conservation and whatever and zoning and everything else hasn't been signed off on it? Uh, if it can. Uh, a building permit won't be without our sign off. No, but an occupancy, occupancy permit apparently will be. Without a sign. -off. Correct. Well, we need to change which, that. Which we have contacted. We need yep. to change that. Which yes. I gotta follow up because I haven't heard anything back other than I can read your email to right. someone else. Right. So <laughs> Maddie did send an email to the building inspector's office to see if there if we can put some sort of check in place to make sure that an occupancy permit does not get why don't we ask them to come in here and talk to them face to face? That would be good. Email is all right, but this is no nonsense. This is ridiculous. Yep. Serious. Yeah. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so, if you would follow up and invite him to come in um, mm -hmm. so that we can have a conversation, that would be great. Yep. Well, the new plan, the as built plan, show the, the changed grade of the, the stuff on the mm -hmm. north side of the driveway. It should. Yeah. <laughs> so. It should be required to show us the grading. Right. And how it's changed from the original approved plan, so. <laughs> right. Are we gonna require them to dig that out by hand? Because I don't see, and again, maybe it's just the angle of the picture, but I don't see how you could get machinery in there. You can't, it, it would have to come out by hand. Um, I mean, it's, it's really only about that wide anyway, yeah. right at the edge of the driveway. You can't get down underneath it, certainly, especially with any equipment, because that's We should still wetland. specify, though, that it needs to be done by hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, they could do a wheeled or track vehicle on the driveway. 
like a rubber track vehicle on the yeah, track. Yeah, but you think it's still it's not vehicle? that it's not really big enough to get any kind of scoop or anything in. Mm. So if they try to do that, they're probably end up digging into the wells. Right, and mm -hmm. r and ripping the silt fence. And well, yeah. yeah. And they're robbing it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Depends on the skill um, of the operator. We have a joint meeting with the select board. Come on up, ladies. I'm comfy. I'm staying. Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to sit here? Yeah, I'm going. You're going up by yourself. Excellent. I'm <laughs> <laughs> about to put you on the spot. Right right. Wow. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Get you yeah. a chair. Let me get a chair. Yeah, we're not going to fit to the wall. I don't want to we'll take your chair, there. Walter, but thank you. That's very kind of you. Right, you so the select meeting. board meeting turned into the town administrator's meeting. <laughs> so let her open the meeting. So we need to open the meeting. Yes. It is 7.32. We are opening the meeting of the Berlin Select Board joint meeting with the conservation. September 18th, 2024. And we have Chris Keefe and Peg Stone present. And me, and but I don't I count because I'm not on the... Uh, <laughs> and Kristen yeah, Rubin and speaking well. for them. <laughs> speaking on behalf, yes. Um, good evening. How are you all? Excellent. Excellent. Um, I was hoping you all had received the memo. We did. Excellent. And then right. Maddie also made us hard copies. Oh. I was going to ask if anyone needed a hard copy. Thank you, Maddie. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. So um, basically, we just wanted to talk about um, the River Run parcels. So we obviously have a longstanding development agreement with River Bridge that actually goes back to 2009. And it's been modified four times. And the most recent time was at this past town meeting. Um, so part of the reason that it's been modified so many times is over the past 15 years, circumstances have changed. You know, we hit COVID, um, there was a loss of revenue, so there were certain things in the agreement that didn't get built, other things that did get built, like the hotel, but the continuing, continuing care retirement community, if I'm saying that right, did not get built. Um, so the ambulance service that was in there wasn't required because they didn't have the need for it as they didn't have that facility. However, there was about $200,000 in back owed rents that Riverbridge owed us from Boundless Adventures. I want to make it clear that it's not Boundless Adventures that owed us that rent. It's actually the Sennies because the um, agreement the lease is between Riverbridge and Boundless and they pay a certain amount of rents to the Riverbridge developers and those rents are supposed to be split 50-50 with the town. Um, unfortunately, given COVID and everything that went on, revenues were a lot lower than they were anticipated to be. So um, what we initially started these conversations was that and we were trying to figure out can we do some kind of exchange that would allow us to recoup that lost revenue in the agreement so we started talking about land and we already had um, the option to buy parcel 6b for a dollar um, so this um, fourth modification that was approved gave us the option to acquire parcel 6a for a dollar it also gave the town sole ownership of the two wells that are located on um, parcel 6b now parcel 6 thank you maddie that's awesome <laughs> Um, parcel 6B has conservation <coughs> restricted area, as you can see on there. Um, and as we went through and started going through the purchase and sale and acquisition process of those two parcels, as we were allowed to do as was voted on at town meeting, um, we realized the conservation restriction does have a limitation on it that it limits the owner, uh, the use of the water to the owner of the property. Now, we've had several groups come forward and express interest in that water. As we know, it's a precious commodity here and we don't have town water. Um, those groups uh, have included Cordelia's Farm. Uh, they were hoping to be able to put a commercial kitchen in their new um, farm stand back there mm -hmm. so they could do more of the you know canning and pies and those kinds of things. Um, and unfortunately, that does require a public water supply. So both of those wells were previously permitted as public water supplies. They've just been inactivated by DEP. 
So it's a much simpler process to get them re-permitted and reactivated because they were previously permitted that way. Um, we also have a new autism center coming in at the Worcester Sand and Gravel site. I have communicated back and forth, but we keep missing each other, so I haven't confirmed, but they're obviously going to have to do something there because they're talking about basically an adult day service for folks, so they're going to have to provide that as well. We they're have, also talking a restaurant and a bakery and the, all kinds of stuff. Exactly. So they're going to need really? a lot of water. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of pieces to it. And yeah. like I said, we keep being like, let's meet, and then you're missing each other. So we're I'm trying to get the skinny on it. Sounds like you've gotten it more than I have. Only I from planning. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, perfect. <laughs> they, she came in several times before she purchased the property and um, went over a lot of what they wanted, she wants to do over there. Nice. Well, that's really, that's <clears throat> helpful, you know, to know, too, um, because I've still been trying to get to, you know, the place where I'm learning everything that's going on at that site. Um, so, sorry, I just needed to pull something up here that's not opening because my, my phone is not behaving. Uh, hold on. Sorry, give me one second. Yeah, I mean, as far as, well, I'll let you. I'm sorry, I'm getting there. I'm trying not to be too yeah. long-winded. <laughs> um, so the, the issue, obviously, <clears throat> is the, the conservation restrictions um, on the property restricting um, the use of the water to the owner, which would be us, um, of the site. And part of what we were hoping to do to recoup some of that funding is to sell some of the water rights because both of those wells are have up to 9,900 gallons per day. There is some question as to whether we can permit both of them because if they're within 50 feet of each other, they can't both be online at the same time, but we've also measured, and they are 53 feet apart, so there is a possibility <laughs> that we may be able to bring them both online. Um, so the, the goal was really we, we've you know to be able to try to recoup some of that funding through those water rights and given the fact that we do have adjacent property owners that were interested um, the, the request that is before you tonight um, is to seek a modification of that conservation restriction to allow for that water to be used there's a number of reasons you know why I see it as a, in addition to town meeting approving it and that being our intent when we went to town meeting it's just a change in distribution it's not a change really in use you already have the wells there that were permitted we're just asking to be able to change that distribution piece of it um, it's really going to you know hurt us on the revenue side and kind of the plan that we had you know moving forward and Obviously, this is a piece of information I wish I had known in advance. Unfortunately, did not. I'm, I'm not a land use expert, so learning all these things, too, sometimes as I go. Um, but also just making sure that what we have um, is able to be viable and sustainable for potential town opportunities on those sites as well, because there has been discussion at planning board um, about potentially putting some housing down there at some point. So obviously we would retain um, portions of that water. Uh, we also have been approached by the Stevens Foundation. They are interested, they are trying to do a museum um, and they are in need of some water for that as well. So I know you have the memo in front of you. I didn't want to read it to you. Um, I will stop there and see what you have for questions. I read it, seems straightforward. What's um, access like to those sites where the wells are now, are they? So they're up by bound, boundless. Right, they're kind of, right. there, there is a kind of a cart path that goes over there, okay. but yep. if you didn't know yeah. you should go down that cart path, you wouldn't know you they wouldn't were there. Yeah. Right, because yeah. it's really just two well heads. Is yeah. There, there is a, a little There, a, there a is little a building. Okay, yeah. um, and the reason I know that is because um, there was a tree that fell right. on the building, um, <laughs> which is being removed <laughs> by the Senes, um, which I'm very happy about. There you go. Um, because we said before we take over the property, you need to please remove the tree that is laying on top of the building. Fortunately, it looks like it might have done a little bit of damage to like the little cupola that was on, like a little outcropping on the building, but it hasn't done any structural damage to the building or to anything on the inside. So <clears throat> Seni currently owns the land that we're trying to, 
acquire it from them so we can sell rights to the water? Pot yeah, potentially rights okay. to the water, and there's a possibility we could um, sell off part of that land or retain it, part of it as well, for potential any opportunities that the town might have. Obviously, we'd have right. to subdivide and come before planning and board and that. we get 100% of the rent from Boundless now. Thank you. That was the piece. To, yeah. yeah. So before... I was sure that was my other question. So yeah. Senny owns us, owes us money? And so they, they did until we did this agreement. Okay. Um, the agreement actually shifts from them owing us 50% of the Boundless Adventures rent to us becoming the owners okay. of those properties for a dollar, okay. and we get 100% of the Boundless Adventures rent. They have two 15... They have a 15-year lease with an option to renew for another 15 years and I believe they're in year six or seven at this point it's Sounds been going right. on for a little so I think it's seven now yeah. so yeah yep. mm -hmm. and yep. they're continuing to do well and they are thriving yeah um, I have to say especially um, post COVID and just that fact that they kind of became an outdoor source and people mm -hmm. are now looking for more things to do yep. um, outdoors they're they're doing really really well up okay. there they have been great um, neighbors yep. um, and we haven't had any issues with them up there at all yeah it is a blast it is really cool it is yep. Chris um, Kristen correct me if I'm wrong but wasn't the revenue for boundless about hundred thousand. Yes, so they Total. were initially bringing in um, about about a hundred thousand dollars was going to the um, the hundred dollars. Sorry, it was initially like eighty four. I think the the first year, and it started creeping up. So I think it's actually probably gone up a little bit more than that, even Chris. Okay. So it's probably at least a hundred thousand a year. Exactly. So how much of that do we get? All of it. Oh, that's how much the town. Oh, that's how the much town. Right. Town. Right. Well, okay. Then you said it was their revenues. But we will it, it, once the town once we owns buy this <laughs> property, <laughs> these properties, the town will get. 100%. I know. I thought you meant. I thought it was Boundless Ventures revenue, and we got a portion of that no. or went from that. I don't know. Yeah. That's yeah. The rent. That's a good amount. Right. That's how much in rent. That's great. Every year. Exactly. So yeah. it's it's like up to I believe it's eight percent of sales, and so it uh, it does grow as the business grows, which is really nice. Right. Um, and so it's been averaging about a hundred thousand for the years that they've closed out, and I haven't seen what our figures, you know, for this year obviously are yet. But I can tell you, I've taken the kids up there, and um, it's it's a hop in place. I mean, yeah. if you don't sign up online, you don't get a spot. Right. Wow. People are really into it. Yeah. So it's a very very cool thing. If you it haven't is. seen it, stop up there. Yep. But um, it yeah, the goal would be to offset also um, some of the cost of the traffic improvements that need to be made down at that rotary, um, as well as going on to South Street. So um, they are with the close on the properties and us purchasing them. The Sennies are also giving us five hundred and fifty thousand dollars towards those roadway improvements, and the town is going to seek a matching grant. Um, from the state, and it's estimated those improvements are about 1.3 million. So we would use the Boundless Adventures rents to tap into the rest of that funding. And so that's to widen the road and repair the bridge, or yes. just the bridge? It's the bridge and the widening <coughs> um, of the South Street um, portion that's um, by the, the post office. By the post office area. Yep. Yeah, that was supposed oh. to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. They to were supposed to like that fix intersection. that intersection. Yeah. Fix that intersection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a long time coming. I remember when they talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's so that's really ago. where we'd be putting this money into, but also we were obviously hoping to be able to recoup additional revenue by obtaining full ownership of the wells. Right now under the current agreement, we share those wells 50-50 with the River Bridge. So we can't do anything with them at this point, but right. if we had sole ownership of them, um, as we will when we close on the properties, then we would be able to negotiate water rights um, and you know, be able to talk about land. Um, there's also been some interest potentially in a little bit of land for adjacent property owners for access and things of that nature because they have to obviously do septic too um, and figure out the water piece. And you know, I think the biggest thing for me is I look at the fact that there is a high capacity of water up there. There is a need. I look at Cordelia's and I say, you know, it would be such a waste for them to have to try to pay to put in a well when there's one right next door. And that's really where I see, you know, being able to help a farm be sustainable in our community in the future going forward. And I understand it is unusual to modify conservation restrictions. However, I would, I would argue in this case that it is a town-owned 
property, it is, it is a bit of a change. Um, it's not a private property. And um, you know, this is really what we brought to town meeting, what we sold to town meeting, and what they voted on. Wait, that was my concern though. Like, yeah. I, I get it, and I think it's great, but the thing is what I was worried about is if we try to make that change in the conservation restriction, and even though it's the town, that might set a precedence that, because that's like our ironclad law that we go by. So if we breach that or change it, and when gets like they, people figure that out, they're gonna say, "Well, you did it for them. I wanted you to do it for me. 100%. And you're gonna do it for me." Mm. Or I'm really worried. About I'm not that. gonna put a CR on my property because you guys will just go ahead and change exactly. it. Exactly. Right. So like I, it. I really right. feel like that's something that I would be mm -hmm. very concerned about. That happened with uh, Berlin Farm. Yep. That people were going to put land in conservation, and they said, "Well, I'm not gonna do it because look, you changed the things right there." So how do I know you're going to protect my land? Right. So. Um, yeah, and I mean, Kristen and I have talked about it and that I have expressed that concern as well. So 100%, um, that's like my only, I do have two questions. Yeah. Um, the first is, I thought when I read this, I really did actually read it. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry if it was boring. I no, tried to no, keep no. it as short as possible. Um, it said, does it say in here, I can't, I couldn't find it by skimming, um, that so the town would be responsible for running uh, the public water supply? No. The, our goal is to be able to actually have someone else run the public water so supply. So that's my question. Because is how, that is highly how will that work? costly. So that would be done through um, an RFP process that we would have to do because it would have to be an open public process and that would give the opportunity for anyone who's interested either adjacently or beyond um, to come in and be able to operate as a public water supply. Um, the issue that I would see um, you know with us running it is it's extremely costly we would literally have to basically create um, almost like a mini department to operate a public water supply sure and we've been advised by DEP that it's really not a great idea for the town if for one area to get into that correct um, so I mean I know the lawyers will make sure that we retain rights and everything but um, yes. So assuming, let's say one of the abutters takes over running the public water supply, they would then charge anybody else who wanted water for that water. We can structure it a few different ways. So when you do an RFP, you actually put it out, for, it's a request for proposals. So you put it out so that like an abutter could come back and tell you what they want to do and how they want to do it and you can decide which proposal is the most advantageous. So if you had feedback on how you would like to see that happen, we can certainly take that into account. And that's really a better way to do it than like a strict, this is exactly what we want. I mean, we can do an IFB, which is an invitation for bid, um, but an RFP is kind of nice because then you open it up and you let folks tell you this is what we want to do and you can say yay or nay. So it kind of gives you a little bit more wiggle room there. So what happens if we don't do this? What if, what if we say no? Then what happens with Fenny and all so that stuff? That's a great question. Um, the town is going to have to seriously consider whether it, you know, logistically makes sense for us to, um, you know, it wouldn't make sense for us to reactivate those wells for one thing because we wouldn't necessarily be using them, which I believe would limit potential future opportunity for planning board because we would have to be the public water supply in that instance in order for the town to get access to the water. So there wouldn't be an opportunity really unless we, the, the estimated cost of bringing those wells back online is about $300,000. So that's pretty substantial. So it really needs to be somebody that's looking at millions of dollars to put in a well versus $300,000 to bring an existing well back online, which I don't think a cost-benefit analysis for the town is ever going to make sense for us to do. Is that per well or for the two wells? That's for the two wells. Okay, but do we, I mean, I know there's like people, there's people down there that want it, but do we have to bring, I mean, it, this thing, it's, 
I guess maybe I'm misunderstanding. It seems like this is more of an issue that Senio, Senio is of money and we're trying to come up with a solution. Well, we did come up, right. We, we did come up with a solution. Um, and right. this we're was buying the, plan. the property regardless. Yes, we are. Yeah. But the right. question is, can we recoup revenue from those wells? And that is a big part of this package of forgiving what we forgave the Senis of, which was the two hundred thousand okay. dollars. So they've been forgiven that through oh, the fourth so modification. No, okay, we so we can't keep going after. Yeah, that was part of the negotiation. We've given so much to them, <laughs> and I know. And it was a tough negotiation. It started with Margaret. It went on for about two and a half years, and we went back and forth. And to be honest, this was why this wells were a huge part of why we settled with them because we were going to be able to recoup some revenue there. So I, I worry about what we presented to town meeting. I worry about you know, the, the revenue that we would, you know, lose through it. And I can fully appreciate the concern about the conservation restriction. I feel like in this case, we're not actually really changing anything other than the distribution of the water. So that modification, we're not actually taking anything out of conservation land. Those wells would remain in conservation. You're not eliminating any conservation land. Um, so I just feel, in all honesty, that it's in the best financial interest of the town to be able to share those rights or sell those rights. So what's the change that needs to happen with the, with the CR? We just need to rewrite language that allows the water to be... Not restricted to the owner. Use, the use right now is restricted to the owner of the property. Because we're the, the, owner, the, the town's the owner of the property mm -hmm. and the town doesn't the want town to get will into be the water the business. Exactly. Basically. Um, I actually had another question. I would have the lawyers write the specific language because I couldn't tell you exactly yeah. what yeah, it needs to say, but yeah. <laughs> but then couldn't it be if that's yeah. the case, that it's the town, then they could figure out some way without changing the CR that the town can do that? No. The town can only... The CR, yeah, the, the, the town has to follow the CR. But the t if right. the owner of the land is the town... Well, that's it, what we're it restricts saying. the use of the right. water just to the like, owner. Just like if oh, you... It restricts the use to... Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I yes. missed, no, that's oh. right. I, missed, <laughs> I might not have said <laughs> it right. That's That could be me. Right. Yeah. 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 It's all right. Um, is there any additional infrastructure that's need to go going to go need to go into, like, treat or pump the water? And if so, is that going in on conservation land or is that going in elsewhere? So everything is already within a shed. And um, there was actually a test done not that long ago. Not a test, but an um, inspection done that not that long ago. Yep. Um, that looked at there's a couple of like computers that need to be updated and a couple of monitoring devices that aren't running properly but the okay. actual system itself is intact uh, we actually never disconnected or decommissioned the water uh, which is interesting we have found it is still running which is actually a very good thing in how a way how long has it been like, it never stopped right but how long has it not been being used, but the equipment has been running. Oh, since 2007. So, okay. it, right, because John Dilly did that, right. did this. Yep. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> it looks like right now there appears to be some type of agreement with the current property owner and Boundless. We believe they may be using a bit of that water. So, it is actively being used and functioning, which is actually a positive no, thing, although better. it's not sure. what we thought was going on because we assume when they were inactivated they were decommissioned and shut down mm -hmm. so we just recently learned that that's not the case so if they're using it is that a violation of the cr no, no because, because the sennies are the, the owners property. right and they they're the and lessee, they're they're tenant. The tenant they're tenant and, and as yeah. long as they're not using it as potable water i don't no. think dep would care right. it's not being used as a public water supply so I think they're using it to both. water the grass. Right. So, that's so what that's figured, what. Yeah. So we, we, I'm not trying I to rat anybody out. Right. But. <laughs> also, what Ethan is asking, I believe, is, are there distribution pipes already in the ground? Oh, right. no. So yeah. my understanding is to get, if you were to go to like Cordelia's, you would have to do some piping, right. um, or to go to the autism center or the really Stevens. anywhere, pretty much anywhere. Right. You have the actual system, but not the piping. What is the the pipe now comes down to on River Road, right? Doesn't it? Right, it does uh, come down because it it it, it it supplied water to the daycare at first right. before yeah. the right. wells across the street were put in. <laughs> so it must just be some of the other property owners that have expressed interest that the piping does not run to at this current time. So you would have to figure sure. that piece of yeah. it out. Yeah. yeah. So could you do it off the road perhaps as opposed to going through the property some itself? Some of it. Like I don't know that it makes sense to go to Cordelia's so from the street. 
Mm. You're right. going down and around, around and, and way up. Yeah. And, or just go bloop, straight up above. through the woods. <laughs> right. <laughs> True. Um, on, on the CR thing, which, you know, I, I know what you're saying, and, I, and I'm concerned about that too, but we usually, we usually donate a CR to SVT or some other nonprofit. In their bile, in their um, so that has to happen with this. Yeah. Yes. Um, the town can so right now the town holds the CR. Yeah. But doesn't own the land. Yeah. Oh. The town won't be able to own the land and hold the CR. So I have um, briefly approached uh, Laura Matai okay. about whether they would be willing to hold the CR and, for this. And. Uh, she said she needs more information and you know we but you know it, as long as it's all agreeable as long as everything's yeah something that SVT would agree with then they would do that <coughs> but that that's um people that concerned about giving us a CR or selling us a CR in addition to that we have added another layer of CR by donating a CR that's actually another, a good and point. that that sort of really point. cements it in, you know. Right. If, if, no, that's a if good idea. SVT and that mm. don't, it's in their um, right, that's a really good bylaws idea. Yeah. that they can't allow things on it. They're, they're more strict than we would be. Right. Mm. Right. Um, in terms of the water piping end of it and getting it over to the Cordelia's and all that, I'm assuming that lot six is Boundless Adventures. No. So, so here's the road in, yeah. kind of here's the parking lot. Right. There... Um, building is yeah. on lot six. Yeah. Is is outside of the CR, but the climbing structure is it's actually in the is actually in the CR. Okay. In yeah, the right. That's yeah. kind of what I was thinking. So, <coughs> what I'm just looking at here is that that's that is that is Cordelia. They own yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. That. So, yep. we could. I mean, I don't know who's right. And the wells are, if I remember They're correctly, the wells are kind of like over here. here. All right. So we where are you going that to? Way uh, like which one? Um, so, so like. The well, she's yeah. recalling that the wells are somewhere like mm -hmm. in this area. Maybe a little further down. Yeah. Maybe uh, like here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like maybe the wells are about here. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just thinking yeah. that there's minimum yeah. disturbance yeah. to the so that's conservation why we would land because you can just kind of go, like you know, to west and then you're on we want the Wheeler's property, right? Which is the owners of Cordelia's, and then they can do what they need to do. Hold on, hold on. Sorry. Thank you. Is there any way to charge? them rent like um, Cordelia's so whoever operates the well the the wellhead whoever yeah. becomes the the um, why can't the, the, the right the oh, the, oh, the, the water, water department supply. basically mm -hmm. will um, decide you know they'll probably charge them for the water yeah they'll yeah. probably charge them a distribution fee or something and yeah, I'm just thinking if there's a way around, you know, if, I don't know, like you were saying that um, Boundless Adventures is renting from Senny so they can use the water. I don't know, I was just thinking if there's a way around that to avoid yeah. having to change the CR. Could you right. sell that to. parcel that has the wells in it to whatever contractor you're that comes in? You're, you're still, still selling it with the CR yeah. because yeah. the wells are in the... Con the yeah, but if you sold it with the CR, then the person, whoever is going to manage the water supply, right? So if you sold it to that company managing the water supply, technically they're the owner of that property, right? And they'll be able yeah, to sell the water and rights. And Cordelius is not a tenant of that property. But it's a public well, water supply, like isn't the definition. Uh, public, it's not a private water supply, right? Correct. So public but water supply means I, I think it really <laughs> just means that it's a specific size. It, oh, okay. and, it, and it's, it's what, who it serves to. So if it's a public water supply, like if you have a, a, bil, uh, a building that has a certain, and it, it has to do with bedrooms for housing and for um, commercial, it has to do with number of like foot traffic. Like say, you know, you had a restaurant open, obviously you have to have, you know, public water supply for the bathrooms and the sink and it has to, you know, and it has to be of a certain size, like you said. So, and it depends on other entities that are like boundless, say if they wanted to put bathrooms in, which they're temporary, so they don't, they use the porta potties. Right. But it would all depend on what their foot traffic is, whether or not they would actually have to do that, or you know, that's why they have porta potties because right now they don't have it permitted as an activated public <coughs> water supply that they could use and put in 
to yeah. sell well, these. Well, there's no septic up there either. Well, that's, but yeah, that's, that's a problem <laughs> that, too. That's neither here nor there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, One more thing. Is there, is there any risk involved in not getting any proposals from, if we request proposals for operating this? Do we risk? It may be too small for. Not getting. Like a. The I reality think. is, is probably one of the abutters would. Yeah. Would. We do have Submit. to open it up publicly. Um, that is a required process with anything that's considered disposition of public property or you know land or rights, but it's not really going to make sense, like you said, size-wise for like a you know distri massive distributor mm -hmm. to come in and do it. You're talking about you know Cordelia's who it doesn't make sense for them cost effectively to put a well in or you know or the autism center or what have you. It, it just doesn't you know, financially makes sense when you have that water sitting there. And I also think the only issue with selling like the whole property met is, is you were suggesting is then we don't retain any of that potential, potentially developable land and we don't retain necessarily water rights, which we or could the rents from Or the bents, rents, thank you, the rents from Boundless <laughs> Adventures. So it really behooves mm -hmm. us to, to keep that and look at revenue generating opportunities from that site. So if we're getting a hundred grand a year though from them, like how much revenue are we looking to recoup from? I mean, I thought it was only like two hundred grand that. So we lost two hundred grand, but also they were supposed to do that bridge and road work, which was yeah, estimated right. at one point three. Yeah. And technically, they were supposed to build us the CCRC, and there was an annual penalty mm -hmm. in the contract of fifty one thousand two hundred for not building that facility. Uh, so which is a little bit care. weird. Yeah, oh, right. the continuing Did, care so facility. So that was in the, so the continuing care facility was the first iteration. Mm -hmm. They didn't change the penalty after? No. In so technically <laughs> they owed us that, <laughs> right? <laughs> but sure. We but weren't going like, to allow them to build two it. two other modifications yeah. besides the last one. And it was still in there. And it was still in there. So technically you could argue that that's lost income. I understand that. <laughs> June's sitting right behind you, so I'm certainly not going to argue with that. <laughs> because I understand from an accounting standpoint, yes, that. Can I be mean, the agreement that says way. we could be charging them that, but in in all honesty, they built a hotel. We generate somewhere between two hundred and twenty and two hundred fifty thousand dollars in revenue from the hotel. And so, you know, them getting a penalty, assessed a penalty every year for something that we don't want that would increase our ambulance service didn't really make sense. So that was all, this was a very complicated negotiation. That was all in the mix mm -hmm. as we wrapped this whole up. The idea was to not have to go back to this agreement and modify it again, but to address all of the outstanding matters. And that's why it took so long to do. And, and be, be done. done with it. So the revenue from the hotel, is that more than we were expecting from the other things that they were going to do for us that they ended up not doing, like the uh, continuing care and all that? The revenue from the hotel was unanticipated revenue. Um, you know, when I came in, the it has been used to basically offset taxes, though. So it's not being used mm -hmm. for actual development purposes down at that site or fixing the road or anything like that. So it has gone into what we call our, it comes in as local receipts, and we use that to help offset what we actually take and charge from taxpayers. Right. Mm -hmm. So if somebody was running, you know, the water, you know, you had, let's say, we'll call them a water department. Are they the ones who determine who can use the water? Or the town would have to say, well, yes, the water can go there, you know? I mean, if we were to sell the entire system over to a public water supplier, you know, it would depend on what we negotiate in the terms of agreement. Um, you know, if there were concerns that you all had and we, you know, wanted to put that in an RFP, and that's certainly something we could share with the Conservation Commission when we draft it and get your input and feedback on it. Um, you know, my understanding is typically they take over the whole thing, they negotiate distribution. Obviously, part of that would be us retaining, you know, water rights and right. a certain amount. And we've kind of talked a little bit um, about. Um, you know what we would need to retain for the town in case of future development so that would all be laid out in there mm -hmm. um, just curious about one thing. you keep talking about future development of the town 
what would you be developing? What land do you see would be developable? There's a little. It isn't under a CR. Parcel. So, Maddie, if you can, from the CR, kind of, right, so kind of that area, Walter. That isn't under CR? No. no. Oh, that line, right. that diagonal line, line is the CR. Got it, got it. Is the CR, yeah. yeah. And then a weird little section down here. Yep. Yeah, weird little section <laughs> is the CR. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. Who, how many acres would you say that? Did, Did you get? Do you remember? Is fourteen it? acre? Oh, oh, the CR. I'm sorry. I thought yeah. you meant the whole property. Uh, it's in the CR. Yeah. It's yeah. right here. Fourteen point four five. Yep. For the for CR. The, for the section. Oh, yeah. lower section. Yeah, the lower section is only twenty five hundred square feet. Not even. It, it's interesting, and you know, I. I think, well, and also restricting it to, to the property owner, you know, I, I look at that and I go, if we're still keeping it as a CR, and as you mentioned, we're donating it, I don't see distribution of water as being contrary to the spirit and intent yeah. of the original CR. Yeah. So that's kind of where my mind went with yeah. it, because I understand the importance of preservation, making sure that you're not setting a precedent. But I, I think you do have a case to make here, that it yeah. is different than I what do, you're I normally do. doing. Right. right. I, so. I believe, if I remember, I, I mean, so the person, first colony development, when they put the CR on there, they still intended on developing, um, you know, houses over here and wanted to retain the rights, you know, I believe they had to put so much land in conservation. Oh, it was like, was it a land swap? Well, it wasn't really a land swap. I'm trying to, do you remember the details about that, Chris? It, not a lot, except that I think they were, wasn't there like 30 or some or more houses? That it was going to be a lot, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and the Sunnies purchased the property from the developer in order to as a developed to, as a pro as a project yes right yeah yeah never and never just never went forward with it yeah um, so I think there was a certain amount of acreage they had to protect okay and it just so happened that that's where the wells were got it and so he was like I'm not giving up my right to the wells because I think he fully uh, intended protect. on going forward with the development that he had planned at the time. Right, and and that makes sense. And and I think the the main you know point here is that we are not taking anything out of, of a CR. You know what I mean? We're not actually you know reducing the size or scope of that CR. Um, you know, you're literally just talking about who can access the water. Uh, so oh. I said I had two questions. Oh, I finally remembered right. the second one. <laughs> I keep remembering. And um, so what if the commission do, did agree? Robin asked what happens if we don't agree. What happens if we do agree? What are the next steps? Right. So the state obviously has to sign off. We Well, we'd have to draft it. The state would need to sign off on it. Um, and we would work with legal counsel to get that all prepared. Um, and the article, there is also the uh, Article 97 process that comes into play because we are transferring land ownership, which comes into play no matter what we do, just so you know, with the wells. So this is going to take a little bit of time because we are doing that transfer um, of ownership. So I've been working really closely with legal counsel to make sure that we dot our I's and cross our T's and do it every step of the way. I did reach out actually. I never heard back from anybody that I reached out to at EEA. We're still waiting for CR. Oh, you're still to waiting be, too? To okay. be finalized and mm -hmm. oh yeah. Because that's, I was trying Island to get. Ridge CR is still not done. It's, oh okay. I was trying to get more information from them exactly for like, so I could come to this meeting and yeah. tell you exactly what, you know, the process was going to be and what their estimated time frames were for those. Um, because, you know, I think it was back in 2020, Article 97 got a little bit more onerous or 2022. Something like that, yeah. Um, but, you know, it is a certainly a process that we, we would need to go through. This is, this is the first step. And does that involve town meeting? I believe that it does, yes. Right. So it's us approval at town meeting and then approval by the state yes mm -hmm. which is what I thought but yep. I just wanted to yeah sorry I left out the town meeting piece yeah. of it 
I have another question. Okay, so I see four people have asked about having access to the water. Um, can we limit how many people can have access? So, like, if four more people, four, you know, other abutters come forward and say, well, we like to use the water too, and I don't know that there really are other butters, to be honest. I don't think there's any, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think there's anybody else, and I think ideally what you would have is one likely a butter would operate it, and then they would negotiate. And I have to say, like, piping to go even further beyond where your immediate area, I don't think would necessarily be cost effective. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, I think you would, you would factor that in, and so I would say almost de facto, it, it's not not going to happen just I mean, because could, of logistics. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and we could also just say, you know, two abutters only, like, you know, mm. so that, that limits it to, I mean, the same, yeah, it limits it to all the people we've already talked about. So you said it, it's going to cost 300 grand, though, to get them up and running? Not from us. If, no, if somebody were, we got, there's an estimate that was done to see what it would cost because it has to be re-permitted and they yeah. have to run um, a flow test. I think it's called a flow test. Mm -hmm. um, oh. I have to say I'm not a, a well expert. I have learned way more about water in the past few months than I ever knew before. <laughs> but um, there are a number of tests and there are some, some um, computer um, monitoring stuff that has to be upgraded. So there's a cost there and then putting in some piping. So is it realistic that any of these fuel butters are going to want to spend that kind of money? Genuinely, I know for sure at least one is, or possibly two, because it would cost yeah. them millions to put in their own well. Oh, okay. AJ. So, so I have a question about um, the town being able to use that water, not to, for distribution, but if we have a fire on that end of town, can we, as part of that, ask for access to that water? Yeah, I don't see so why not fire for fire safety. Yep. Yeah. Is that is that reasonable uh, that's to include? Reasonable to include, but probably not actually that helpful. But we may not want to limit it to just fire suppression. You may just want to say town has access to the water. Right, but I'm, what I'm saying, what I'm getting at is that I don't know that the flow rate is going to be sufficient True. to support, oh, a to fire support. suppression. Okay. Well, I, I am painfully familiar with, familiar with this from living in Sawyer Hill. Yeah, I guess I just oh, okay. it, but like <laughs> well, we that's, that's very helpful. Because we have we have a cistern there that's eighty thousand or forty thousand, I don't remember, but it, I think it's forty thousand gallons, so that a fire truck can come in and fill right. up there. Oh, mm. So it needs that pressure. Right. So that it, it not just it doesn't need just pressure; it needs like a tank of water. Oh, okay. In the order of forty or fifty thousand gallons to be. And if this can only that, pull out nine thousand nine hundred gallons a day, then it's not useful it's, for firefighting. Okay. Good right. see. Or, or you need, or you need a pump that, or you need a situation where you've got fire hydrants on site and a full-on fire suppression system that's capable of putting out somewhere around the order of seven or eight hundred gallons a minute. Wow! Well, so right. that I watched them. Right. I watched them bury the They'd cisterns have to do a sister, over at the apartment. Is insanely expensive. That back parking do. lot. I think there's like six cisterns buried. Yeah. In under there. So yeah. still, but to, for to exactly AJ's, that. To AJ's point, though, I still think it's worth the town retaining some sort of rights. Oh, oh, we definitely. <laughs> That's <laughs> not <laughs> actually. Right. I, yeah, I, I, I would totally agree with that. But Aside this, from this, just housing or fire right. suppression or yeah. whatever, we right. would not give up the entire rights. I mean, we would definitely retain rights, and I think one of the, the conversations that we would have to have is how much do we retain do we retain a certain percentage of the gallons per day that it's able to put out do we talk about is it you know depending on you know we'd have to have that conversation mm -hmm. we didn't get that far because this was really the first step right. to see if we right. could the bit, know, i mean the first step is getting clarification if it's one or two wells yeah which dep could not tell me without us going through a re-permitting process to activate the wells. I did talk to DEP. So that's a little bit of a chicken and the egg kind of thing. Indeed. Mm -hmm. and just a reminder, you know, at Highland Ridge, we have two wells mm -hmm. and a cistern as well. Now, I can't tell you any of the specifics on pressure right. and those things. But it's probably it's a similar setup. And you well, uh, and a part of the pressure system that through all 66 units and the, yeah. right. and the clubhouse. Right, because right. it's right. all sprinkled. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
putting putting in a cistern it has to be really robust. It does have to be very robust, and putting in a, a cistern, to your point, would probably be cost prohibitive for anybody to actually make. If that became a restriction that we put in place for them accessing the water, it would probably be at that point less expensive for them to dig, dig their own wells. <laughs> yeah, that kind of system gets you get just down to it. I, I I threw out fire suppression, but yeah. The river's 100 yards down, or 200 yards away, <laughs> right. and they can dip a, a pipe in there. Yeah. Yeah. But no, mind. it doesn't hurt, though. I mean, yeah. it's, it's yeah. good thoughts. And I mean, I think this is something that as it develops, we need to have all of the conversations with the key stakeholders. You know, like I said, the first step is just to see, is this even feasible? You know, and then moving forward to really get a sense of what we should retain and for which purposes. Yeah. That would all, and that would all be outlined in the RFP. Yes, we can limit. We could li limit the amount of water that a user could get, right? We we could retain a certain amount of rights for us. Oh, okay. We wouldn't really be able to dictate what was done with the rest of it. Oh, okay. My concern would be if we made it really water. restrictive. Um, you, you, it would be a challenge. It, it might not be cost effective for other people because there is going to be an investment as you know mm -hmm. to your point right. on behalf of whoever takes yeah. over the public water supply. Right. Well I, I do know like the town of Clinton okay so a lot of their land was taken over for the Wachusett Reservoir and they were allowed they are allowed so much water every year. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And no more. Right. Yeah. Right. We, and that would be the a same similar model, model. A similar situation. Yeah, that's right. That's what I was asking. Yep. So any other questions? Do we need to vote on this tonight, or is this something we're going to mull over? That or? is the next question I was going to ask. If possible, I, I would love a vote tonight because it really determines how we move forward with regard to the purchase and sale and moving forward with an RFP on the property. Um, I, I certainly understand if you do need to take more time on it. Um, you know, if, if you were ready to make a vote tonight, that, that would be wonderful. But I understand this is a difficult decision. So I leave it to you folks as to what the best thing is for you all. I can vote tonight. Is I make a motion that we vote tonight. Yeah, I, I'm fine yeah. with that. But I, is there just any way to get around not changing the CR? That that I talked to town council extensively okay. about it. I mean, it, it it will not change the CR. It's you know right. itself, except right. for just modifying that, that one bit. little piece. Yeah. I wish. I wish. Trust me. I tried. Right. At a conference call with Kristen and town council and to try and uh, we've been talking about this oh, for yeah. really a since town meeting si I, well yeah I pretty much right, right after, after town, town, meeting. town meeting is when you discovered this correct when i sent clause. the email off to the attorney and said could you please prepare the purchase and sale this just got approved at town meeting she did the research on the property to prepare the purchase and sale and just said, by the way, just so you know, you've talked about the wells. There's a clause in there about the wells. And I went, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it, it, what would be that others would hear about this being changed, let's say, outside of, well, obviously. Right. So it will have to go to town meeting yep. to be voted on. Mm -hmm. So um, I, Walter made me feel better about future CRs in that um, this is a unique case for CRs that were, well, we, first of all, I don't actually think the commission was involved with this CR. Okay. Um, just like the CR at the driving range, that was the planning board that did that as part of their zoning to allow a bigger Building, building then oh, right okay. exactly so that that um, so that is one of the reasons why this CR is not co-held with SVT this CR after the purchase happens actually will be held by SVT okay. and any CR that we do is al is always held by somebody else 
um, which was kind of a thing that I hadn't really thought about. Um, so that does offer a protection on land that we work to protect. Um, okay. You know, out, out, over and above right. anything that the town would want to do. Right. And um, I, if we do vote to approve this, I believe we're going to have to be prepared to get up at town meeting and say all of those things. Mm -hmm. But because I, I think that's valid. You're, they're going to want to know your yeah, thoughts on that. Uh, absolutely. Um, yeah, um, there's been a lot of good questions, a lot of details of this. We can talk this to death. Uh, you know, I just stand back and I look at it, and this isn't quite so significant when I look at it town-wide. I don't see a lot of people rushing up to give us CRs in town. There's places we should be getting CRs and buying, and the developers are scooping them up putting roads in and developing all over town. I mean, we're in trouble. This this is a good thing if it'll help what they're doing with the Tyler Farm, if it'll help Cordelia's, if it'll help over here with the Autistic Center. The, the benefit of this, to me, outweighs even the worst risk that could happen isn't really that drastic. And the idea of your point is good, but I, I don't think it would interfere with anybody. I don't people. I don't think people would say, "Ah, I'm not going to give you any CI because nobody's going to give us any CI anyway." Let's face it. <laughs> it Walter happen. always surprises me. I'm like, is it Walter? Come on, wake right up! Now? Wake up! Where is it going to happen? <laughs> I, know I mean, there's there, there, a do developer it. to right. come in ready to out buy us, out do anything. There's so much going on in town now. People, I know the town better than anybody here, and I don't see anybody. I can't see anybody's wanting to step up and don't. My neighbors a CR. did. <laughs> I probably am going to do the same thing. So. Right. It, <laughs> we, we've got pessimistic Walter tonight, <laughs> well, good. which good. is yeah. I, I am probably I am going to be doing it. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. I thought this was oh. optimistic Walter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I know. I was kind of like, wait a minute. We should be out trying to buy land and working harder at, at scouting out and getting it. land than we are instead right. of some of the stuff we're fooling on. This uh, thing should be passed. This is a good thing for a lot of people. And if there's any risk in it, it's insignificant <laughs> compared with the gain to have, in my <coughs> humble opinion. Uh. Well, I've already given my humble opinion. Does anybody else have a humble opinion? <laughs> Are there any conditions that you'd want to put with that? I guess that would be my, you know, a lot of things were raised tonight. Um, is there, or is that subject to, I don't know, just think it out loud. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I think I would like to have a conversation about the commission being able to gain in some of those revenues, a percentage, <laughs> a flat fee, uh, whatever. Um, I just like the percentage. <laughs> now, that's a good point. Um, <laughs> it, 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 and, and <laughs> a little recurring revenue because we have three payments left from the mall. Mm -hmm. And I like your thinking. Uh, other than that, I, I don't think it should be a lot of money because I don't think that this is going to be a big money maker for the town. Unfortunately, um, I don't think so. But right. it is going to be a one, t likely more of a one time or a small annual ongoing payment. And just do keep in mind, it is to offset an existing agreement. Um, you know, it's not new revenue for the town per se. So I think, you know, I think that it could be a little bit challenging um, to try to you know make that justification I don't want to speak for the board but you guys are in open session so I've done a way too much talking would y'all no, like you've to done speak okay. <laughs> okay. Well, all right yeah, say, say, how badly do you want this stuff no I'm just kidding oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't even joke like that <laughs> oh I'm gonna look at both of you back there then <laughs> you want to arm wrestle yeah, yeah. 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 No, I mean, but it's it's a lot to consider. The RFP is a lot to write out. And oh, yeah. I don't think that we can make a decision on that. Whether CONCOM gets a piece or not, that's a lot to consider, too. So I think just right now is, is there an ability 
private con con for us to proceed to do something with the water. If not, you're going to have a chunk of land that has a chunk of water sitting on it that we can't do squat with it, and unfortunately, we lost a crap ton of money um, that we can't recoup. I think we made the best deal we could. I really do. With the sunnies. Um, it was not. And easy. I would like to see Carolyn. I'd like to see you involved. You know, as far as keeping conservation involved in this as we go forward. I, I, I agree and would appreciate that. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm um, very willing to do that. Um, good, yeah, good. I, I think, it, you know, we've ha definitely had some good meetings leading up to this and, um, yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't imagine continuing on without getting feedback in the process. I would just show up at yeah. your door. <laughs> you know that. I know where you work now, so I might show up there, That's too. True. That's all right. I, I know where you work, too. I was say, that, that was probably an yeah. idle thread, considering mine's easier. <laughs> Are we done with development from Seni at this point? Are they Yes, like, they want to ride off into the sunset. Good. Well, they have Matt sold the they, liquor stories going back to the Cape, where he wants to be down there right. at his Cape house. And uh, they What want about to be the out. strip of land in front of that's the, the one piece that's left that they're trying right. to we don't, we don't do something specific. right get rid of yeah. they're trying to get rid of it good yeah strip a lawn yeah actually plant trees no they they, they yeah. um I, I i think in in a way they really are done yeah. they, they they've um it's run its course for them as well yeah they sure been it's been a long here. time Matt's, no Matt's they really haven't yeah. they, they yeah they're yeah. upside down <laughs> Oh, they must be. I mean, they've done they're, a terrible they're, job. They're massively right? upside down because of the water, and they didn't anticipate the was. But did they tell us it was a three million dollar loan they had to take out for the water? Oh, probably. So the, they have there's over their, at the hotel. Yeah. yeah. So right. there's their revenue. The, they have no one to sell. Right. Too. There's their profit. Yeah. So in the end, you know, I think we made out with the best deal possible, and they, you know, can ride off into the sunset, and we move forward with what makes the most sense for this town. Right. Just think of that land down there had an agricultural preservation restriction on it 20 years ago. We wouldn't have been in this mess at all. Right. They yep. come along, want a big deal, going to do this, going to do that. Look at the mess that's been created. Yep. Yeah, that really has been a huge disaster. Everything. I know. Yep. Big deal. Well, that's why I just think it's time to move forward and recoup what we can and, you know, make the best of what we have down there and make sure that the town's interests are protected to especially financially and mm -hmm. conservation wise to the fullest extent possible right what was that strip of land that um uh, where the mm -hmm. liquor store is, is? It parcel okay. nine is that what it is, is? is that what it's or called ten nine so ten? It's, it's nine nine thank you yeah it's this okay yep that building um, and yeah. There's a big sign Does up there right now. Does it include that daycare factory? No. Okay. Daycare factory. <laughs> 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 They're churning out children over there at daycare factory. So, where is the strip of land? Right there, right it's along the river road. It's in front trust of me. the apartments. It's, it's I knew Carol. This, this, is, this is meeting seven yeah. of the day. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, so that kind of undeveloped like between, Hopefully you between start the liquor store, <laughs> the Nine. operating liquor store, and the defunct liquor liquor store. Right. Um, that. Um, remember. That's where they want did, to put the townhouses. I, I was going to say, did that did that actually make it to town meeting, or did they withdrew it? I think they withdrew it. I once think the, so once too. Once twenty two yeah. started to fail, they realized they weren't winning friends and just. Sure. Yeah, well, when they came to planning and said that it was considered urban density, I was like, um, do you know where yeah. th where you are? Oh. Like, have you looked around? Was that also the time that they thought we had public water and, like, septic and what? And, uh, yes, their drawing showed hydrants <laughs> in, in a total white, uh, total white community. Yeah. So is that where, they, where they wanted to put a small, affordable houses? Yeah, but crammed in. And right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like okay. They wanted to put like 40 units on that <laughs> right. or some. Yep. Okay. Yes. I'm ready to vote. So does anybody have a motion or do I? I move I that we um, accept the um, proposal that the Board of Selectmen has put before us. Second. Any further discussion? All right, I'm going to 
ask you to vote. All those in favor of accept of agreeing to change the wording of the CR, M modify the wording of the CR for lot 6B at River Bridge, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. And we will work closely together. I really appreciate yes. your time. Is thank you. River Bridge or River and Maddie, River. we're closing the meeting at 831. Uh, 831. Oh, I, I gotta yeah, say, I yeah. thought you yeah. met our meeting too. <laughs> 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 no such luck. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been really yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I want to thank all of you for the support. This has been such a long road. Yes. And I'm um, day one. You know, I, I feel like again. I'm seeing yeah. the light at the end of this tunnel, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Did so, Kristen need to sign B? It's been a lot of negotiations. Oh, do you need to sign yeah, it? Sure. I sure can. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. We want to be legal. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we're going to take just a couple minute break. Roger. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Turn off the camera. Um, That's all right. Sorry. I tried. No, it was okay. either Highland Ridge, which I didn't qualify for, or $1.5 million houses, which I could not afford. <laughs> I know all this time and please, and you know, please and I'm in Marlboro, I'm not too far away. 15 minutes. They're allowed to have whatever opinion. We're setting the note down. Oh, problem. Not everybody. I know. I, I was like, I was like, who, who's talking right now? I know. I, I, like he never ceases to amaze me. Oh, it, yeah. From the beginning of the meeting to the end of the yes. meeting. <laughs> He was not really the one that I thought would champion this. <laughs> and you know what? All right. He might not have had, if it had been at the next meeting. True. Or the last meeting. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the hearing aid didn't have to see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much for your, your well, all of your guidance. Yeah. Very yeah. appreciated. And you're, you're welcome. You know, all right. Your cautious <laughs> guidance, too, because we want to make sure we do things right. Yeah. I, that's exactly. very that's important. Good, that's I never wanted to be the stick in the mud, no. but at the no, same it's time. it's nice to hear, you know, where you think this is going or where it might go. Yeah. Right. You know, then we can work from there and see. Is this going to have to bring candy concern. next time as a thank you? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Make it chocolate. So, better so than, we'll better than show arms. Dark chocolate. Holly, Holly had wow. the viewer, wow. and then yes, right. yes. Yes. Walter yes. saved the oh, day. Yeah. I know your grandmother yep. very well. Yeah, it, she taught uh, me in a Honestly, grade. that was she? that was yeah. my yeah. only concern. Day long. My only concern was. Cool. I told him that. that the it might be good reason. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your concern. Uh, would be she loved first oh, graders. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, nothing to do with one person. Oh, oh no, <laughs> that's not their concern. And so when you were saying it, I'm like. <laughs> and then Holly said it. <laughs> I, I oh, purpose. I was, like, yeah, yeah. I was. I had to say that. It's yep. Yeah. Yeah. It, honestly, that's because I do agree that it's a minimal change. I do agree it's a benefit for the town. I, my only concern was the reputation of. Right, but the way that it needs to be explained that it is for the betterment of the town. It is for the betterment of local businesses. Otherwise, congratulations. All that lost revenue is lost revenue. Yeah, and but, but yeah. never get it back. But even like if the developer, developer came in and said, here, you know, I only have to adjust this one little half acre in order to do my thing, and it's going to bring the town so much money in taxes, would you allow me to do this? How is I don't that know. Different? I, you know what I mean? Like right, but but if, if, so what we have to do 
and maybe we figure out how to do something more permanent other than just having a policy is we need to make sure that all CRs are not held by the town. Can we talk about the, this right now? Do we have this oh, no, on. No. You're not back on because you don't have a member yet. Right. We're not back on. I know, but are we allowed to talk about no, this? No, we're just chit-chatting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to vote. <laughs> <laughs> <Hey, Paul. laughs> Whatever. Um, yeah. Right, but, you know, something more permanent, like I said, other than a policy, yeah. so that if we have a CR on a piece of property that is for conservation, like Rattlesnake Hill, you know, I think we should write a CR for Rattlesnake Hill and have SVT hold it. Um, Can I ask a question? Yes, you What does Sudbury Valley holding it give us? Like so that it? offers a different level of protection. So because it's uh, another person or because of them specifically? Because of them specifically as a land trust. Okay. So their whole purpose is to hold, is to hold land in trust, right? right? Um, so they would never agree to chain mo uh, to a modification right. um, I and actually I did talk a little bit about this with Laura and that's actually not a hundred percent it's not like they would never agree but there would have to be way more compelling reasons um, so not only would we need to be convinced they would need to be yeah. convinced before it could even go to town meeting or even go to the state um, so just because we agree doesn't mean that this is a done deal. Yeah. Mm. But uh, even like our CR for Highland Ridge stuff hasn't been done. If this is going to be an amendment or a change, that's probably going to take even longer. It even has to go through the state, right? So it's till it's really done. Is it right done? So it could be years. It, it could. Be, it, it's probably going to be at least a year, yeah. if not more. Right. Yep. Mm. But. Um, but they could still say, could they? not change it. Or sure. Right, so that's another thing yep. that could happen. And so it has yeah. to be a two-thirds vote. To right. right. On the state house floor. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. But not a town meeting. I don't know what the percentage would be at town meeting. Yeah. Right. All right, but let's, Roger, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just heard you. Yep. <laughs> um, okay, we're like an hour late for our next meeting. I told you, you jinxed it. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> You're right. Um, okay, so the applicant is Walter Brickford for an RDA. Um, 745. Yep. yep. Seven, plus three. Uh, oh, I know what time it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I think we're on right. here, Fictional we're 745. Uh, <laughs> project to determine if improvements to a stone culvert crossing at the trailhead of Relin Meadows and related site work is subject to the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. Um, Where's the trailhead do, on the map? Right. So, right. So, Orient. Yeah. So, right. Pleasant Street. 62 slash slash percent. Yep. Street. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Trailheads like down there. Yeah. Right. It's, yeah. it's the black dot. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the black dot. It's the black dot. Okay. Yeah. Because that's just field. Okay. Yep. Um, do you have the pictures here? Because no, to me the pictures kind of make this a no-brainer. Yeah. Yeah. The the um, you know it get. I built several bridges around that Brewer Brook thing anyway on state land. Uh, this happens to be our <laughs> land, and uh, but never any excavation. And in fact, you know, I borderline almost putting a bridge in here anyway, telephone poles without interfering with anything. But that rock is eight feet by th three, uh, four, uh, eight inches thick. It's a beautiful rock. And uh, it's going to take skip soil. We'll have to have a machine in it just to pick that up, get it out of the way, pick those rocks up, open that up a little bit. It isn't. It isn't muddy. It isn't even sandy. It's all just sheer rock. So it isn't any going to be any disturbance or um, siltation or anything like that. It's a. It's a one day job. We can get in there and clean it up, and it'll be better flow through there than it is now. And is that intermittent or perennial? Say that again. Intermittent. Intermittent or is dry as a bone. Right, yeah. that's what I thought. Yeah. Right, um, Maddie, can you go back to that trail map again for a sec? Sorry. 
Yeah. The map is right, that's where it is right there. Yeah. 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 That's it. No, don't. Okay. <laughs> right, so it's at that first stream crossing, not further down. Right. It's okay, because that I crossing. was concerned about put it, bringing equipment in way oh, down no, there. Oh, no, it's yeah. just right on the field. It's all field. Okay. Yeah. And your the plan is to remove the stone and put a, a wooden bridge wood like... Bridge. Well, not quite sure. We're going to pick the stone out, and if it can be the, the culvert that went over a culvert only about 20 inches wide to two beautiful stone walls and that went across the top of it and this one washed out. If we could flip the rock the other way and it'd be a footbridge, it'd be a, be a beautiful bridge that in would itself. Be, that would be ideal because that was, uh, my other question is where, do you, where are you going to put all that? Yeah, that's what I, that's, that's the objective. If not, then it'll be a matter of taking that big rock, just sitting it off to the side and then I'll just put a couple of telephone poles across and do a wooden bridge but right now it's, it's I, I think it's borderline hazardous it, it looks like it it is it, it yeah. it's, I'm yeah. so something definitely needs to happen and first I want to thank you Walter for bringing yeah. this to our attention yeah. um, so A negative determination, so it is in the resource area, but it is not. Let me see. The work described is within the buffer zone, has to find, but will not alter area subject to the jurisdiction, to jurisdiction under the act. It will alter man-made structure. It won't alter any natural. But it's not going to alter the the functionality of the no, stream. If anything, all. it's going to improve it. Improve it, right? Right. Yeah, right. Um. So, anybody have any more questions? Anybody want to make a motion? Make a motion to issue a negative determination of applicability. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask you to vote. All those in favor of issuing a negative determination, say aye. 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 All right. Could go back to the plan one, uh, Maddie, just for the heck of it. See those dots, those blue dots there? I, I'll send you some pictures. You should see the, um, the two blue ones closest to the bridge, let's say those represent American chestnuts that I planted several years ago. You should see the chestnuts on those things right <laughs> now. And the other one, the other two, there's American black walnut there. I, I see more and more black walnuts around than I ever did before, and we're really on the northern boundary. They're not much above Connecticut, but well, that's more black it, walnuts. Well, that's because the climate's warming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But these are two beautiful, uh, there's four beautiful black walnuts. I've liberated a couple of them, but the uh, black walnuts are, you know, bushels of them on these trees. Really? Yeah. They're worth going down and looking at and, and uh, even picking some. Yeah. But if you pick the black walnuts, you want to wear gloves because they, they use, the hulls are used for staining. Well, you know. Yeah, the oh, tannins. Right, so you yeah. get that on your hands. And as far as the American chestnut, you want to have gloves too because you can't pick them up. They're like little porcupines. Mm -hmm. But uh, I gathered a bunch <laughs> the other day. But anyway, it's just interesting how beautiful that is down. It's an interesting spot, really, nature wise. I think maybe Walter doesn't sign it just because oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's his proposal. <laughs> okay. Okay. You should probably abstain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't vote, did you? No. <laughs> yeah, I should say that in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thank you. Thank you. I know. So, again, thank you, Walter, for mm -hmm. doing the. Thank you, Maddie, for doing the paperwork for Walter. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's it. All right. So I checked the box. Is there? 
can never remember on this one. Are there two places that we have to check? No, I think it's just the one and just dating it. So when we'll hand it over to Walter, <laughs> right. which I think I may have right put them there. That's today. <laughs> Uh, you, you you actually put tomorrow, tomorrow's date, right? Is today the 18th? Yep. Yes. yes. Oh, never mind. <laughs> you put today's date. Right. Um, okay. So Maddie's gonna, um, so remind me what 39 Sorry Hill Road is. So it's more just a project update. Um, they updated their plans. It oh, doesn't yeah. have to deal with any work within the 100 foot buffer. Um, but they were just letting us know they updated their plans. So they sent us a hard copy. I asked for a digital copy. This is digital copy, but they're still, the only thing they're doing within the 100 foot buffer is just removing, you know, that foundation. Which we already permitted. Yep, and they shed, so. Right, and so I what's. I think they're just doing different things up here with the construction of the house um, and barn. Like the orientation of the house. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Awesome. Yep. But that's all that changed is it's not that they're doing anything. Yep. Yes, <laughs> untoward. All right. Um, if nobody has any objections, unless there's something time, se time sensitive under land management, I would like to kick that down the road to the next meeting. Anybody? <laughs> Second. <laughs> right. um, if you have not read the CR for 72 Carter Street, please do for the next meeting. <laughs> I finally did. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's actually many changes that I want to make. So, um, if you haven't read it, read it, and we'll talk about okay. it at the next meeting. Okay, did you send it out after the last meeting? I didn't. Did no. Oh, so you sent it out without, without Did the, I send, without send it without the, the notation? Yeah. Right. Somebody I think that is after yeah. the August yeah. 7th meeting you did it. Maybe right. Oh, yeah, was that the one from a while yeah. ago? Yeah. 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 I actually did read that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what it said anymore, but I have to read it again. Too. I read it too. Yep. So the, the newest one has been emailed. Yeah. Okay. Yep. If you can't it. find it, just shoot me an email yeah. and I'll resend yeah. it to you. Who wrote it? Or is it boilerplate? It's uh, boilerplate, boilerplate cut down. that Maddie put together. Okay. So it definitely needs to, like, there's something in there that, so the two biggest modifications is there's something in there about the house. Okay. That we definitely need to take out. Yeah. Also, the way that the property is identified, I believe, is no longer 72 Carter Street because okay. that's the house. Okay. And that's been broken off. So we have to figure out how that's going to be identified yep um, so those two things for sure um, and then um, some other smaller things but those were the two big ones it's okay. like mm, I don't think we can call it 72 Carter Street anymore <laughs> Fair enough. Call it Potter House Hill. right which is what I wrote Potter House Hill conservation area yep mm -hmm. yep, yep. Cool. Um, okay does anybody else have yes, any? I'll pass this around and we'll take a glance. I don't know how to handle this. Where is it? There's a red car and two people on foot that I see almost every day when I go to pick up Grace or pick her up, we bring her home or something. And they are standing in the parking lot for Brewer Book. Oh, yeah. Smoking. Well, they've taken to throwing the cigarette butts on the ground. Oh, now, this is the parking lot and trailhead that Gracie and I clean up a couple of times a year. Oh, yeah. I don't want to take her in there and have her... Pick those up. No, I'm not gonna do it. Right, yeah. But it's, there are thousands of them. That's, that's, that's you know, two feet by two feet or, or something. Right. I, I've uh, noticed that we should just request the police that? to stop in the town, because neither one of us, we might get in trouble there. Um, yeah. You know, we'd be in Cues of something else to do if we were to say anything to them, but the police could go in and just yeah. say that's obliterating. It's terrible. Okay. Yeah, it, it's an eyesore. I was okay. at. Um, uh, then I'll go see Eric. And yeah, see see if, if well, my that. Back. Anybody want to see? Yeah. I mean, it's just you saw it because you yeah. and you and Ethan were over there doing the. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we came in from oh, the you? other oh. side. Yeah. Did you say Brewer Brook? Yeah. Yeah. Right off the, the Pleasant Street. Near Jones, Jones, Jones Road. Road mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, at Jones Road. Okay. Has anybody talked the to them at all, or there's just nothing to talk about? Yeah. They're just making a mess. And they're still going to do it anyway. Right, well, I, I, 
think it, so AJ is going to go down and see if right. he can get the sure. officer to swing by and say, hey. No more. Cut the baloney. Mm -hmm. No more. Um, and then I, I'm still going to have to go clean that up, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to take a rake. And yeah. So it's only a couple of people. I see the two same two people pretty often, and then there's a red small SUV. Here's a small red, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you see that hand sticking on both windows with their cigarettes. They usually park on the north. It's the almost line. a homeless situation, although I know they live up across the street. Yeah, yep. They just they did it all day long. Is that, yeah. Is that campus? Apparently can't smoke smoking? up on yeah. the other side of the road. Yeah, yeah. So they can get on in. But hang in there. fine. Right, bring an ashtray. Yeah, bring a, bring a something. Don't mm -hmm. flick it on the ground. Right. Yeah. yeah. Field strip your, your cigarette and take the. Right. Yeah. 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 Don't leave it. But remember, at least the po unless the police see it, and they can say it's not mine. Right. So. Camera. But, but hopefully, yeah. we'll hopefully <laughs> just stopping by and having a conversation yeah. will yeah. be enough to yeah. Yeah. to to yeah get them to understand. Yep. Yep. Um, anything else? No, I'm. Oh my up. goodness! Just the one thing. <laughs> Hurry up and stop before you I know, right? Go. I will. Anybody I will else? Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> We're leaving for um, Ireland on the third, so I probably missed both of the meetings in October. Oh. Um, we'll talk about that more in a second. Okay. Okay. Going once. I just want to say one thing. You know, AJ and I did have the uh, invasive plants session with SVT. Oh, good. And it was good. I brought my uh, two grand nephews who were oh. visiting from <laughs> our London, teen London, England teenagers. So um, these are city boys. So they got quite a uh, workout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to get something done? Uh, those are the two to go to. <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing is we got to fly them in. So I think. Yeah. Right. Little, yeah. Thirteen and fifteen. But at any rate. But no, I thought. It was kind of a good relationship builder with uh, Jane Mahoney. I don't know if you know about if you. I know the name. Yeah. But they were very they were very helpful. And then after we finished our session, we went in the area. Well, what down by where the. Um, well, not the wellheads necessary. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess yeah, it is where, yeah, where the wells are back in that area in there. Mm -hmm. So it was it was useful. But again, and they were kind enough after AJ left, we went back and looked at some of the trees. And when we look at the map now, I think most of the tree problems that you know we may have you know, for the concerns we've expressed and others as well, they're really on the association property. They're not on SVT property. Okay. So for what it's worth, and Walter kindly offered maybe sometime in the future, he'd walk around some more and we'd um, take a look and see if there's anything that we really, he thinks should be done and then we can Move forward. Awesome. We well, that's good. At least you got eyes on yeah. whose property it is, and absolutely it helped. And we did vote, and we have three new. We have two, three new trustees. Wonderful. For the for what it's worth. Awesome. So okay, thank you. Great. All right, I'm gonna make a motion to close the meeting at 8:54 p.m. Second. This is non-debatable. Everybody, who, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed can go home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can stay if you want. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, are we okay. meeting on the so second? We, yeah, the first so Wednesday, right? Then I, then I will be here. Okay. I we're thought you were optimistic Friday. tonight. And then you will be very optimistic. optimistic. I think, actually, I think we leave the yeah. third. Yeah. I night. thought you were going to so shoot that thing down. Like 9 o'clock. So I didn't really get a chance. Yeah. I think Okay. I have to check Either way, yeah. yeah. Um, She's in charge of this <laughs> circus. <laughs> Who's in charge? Ann. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. see you in October with candy. Chocolate snickers, Reese's peanut butter Awesome. <laughs> have a good night, everyone. So, do you have questions? Have a good night. <laughs> I mean, I have so many questions. <laughs> right? I'm really interested in all of these properties because I didn't know that there's, I mean, I, I know of Sawyer Hill development. But just the stuff that you guys are keeping tabs on, obviously, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, it's one of really the cool. cool things about being on a board is you get to know what's going on. Definitely. Like, yeah. I knew stuff <laughs> that Kristen didn't know. Yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> about the autism center and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, well, you know, when you're on the uh, other board too, you get to know all this stuff. Right. Right. Yep. Um. Oh, Lord, yeah. <laughs> I thought you left. So, 